Double the topics and double the fun. I'm Charity. I'm Alan. I'm Dan. And I'm Sarah. And we are in very lucky number 13. Very lucky. Crash, like the we don't lightning. do bad luck no. here. No. So <laughs> <laughs> we are starting new season 13. Oh, and I brought my Jason mask too. <laughs> oh. No, we, we step on cracks and break windows and have black cats <laughs> walk walk wherever they please. Black it's cats not are Friday. the cutest. Yeah, black yeah. cats are the best. <laughs> they are. <laughs> <laughs> so well, with that, that yeah so sense. we're gonna start our new episode and alan's gonna let us know what yep, we're yep, talking yep. about today so go ahead and draw our okay. topics out of the hat our first one is favorite rom-com Ew. Ew. Okay. no they got their place they got their place <laughs> yeah in the trash <laughs> they got they got their place <laughs> all right old wives Tales. Tales, not <laughs> TA sixes. Talos. <laughs> <laughs> old wives Talos. Tal sixes. Uh, to, to be fair, it does look like a six. <laughs> Sorry, could be old wives toes. <laughs> <laughs> old, wi old wives toes. <laughs> I would not watch that. That's a nail biter for sure. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's gross. Yum, that's the yum, only thing that yum. came to mind. So I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay, so let's get the rom-com topic over and done with. So let's start with that one. So who's yes. got a favorite rom-com? Everybody's got a favorite rom-com, even you, Charity. Oh, I mean, I have one, I guess, but I'll I'll start with you, Alan, since you spoke oh. up first. Tell yeah. me your favorite rom-com. They all got a good place. Um, I think uh, I think my favorite, the one that I go back to often, is Roman Holiday. That's a really good one. Ooh, mm -hmm. classic. Very mm -hmm. nice. Um, and... Uh, as far as like the sort of the the new school kind of with the the Meg Ryan's and the Tom Hanks's, um, but you got Notting Hill, you got uh, there's so many to pick from. I, exactly. Think of well, any. I'm trying to think of what's the one with the AOL. Um, you, you got, got mail. mail. You got mail. Yeah, Sleepless in Seattle. Sleepless in Seattle. Yeah. But then you go way back and you have like uh, the, you the got Jimmy sassy Stewart ones room. like. Uh, well, as that's good the as shop it gets. Do you like You Got Mail? Yeah. I have a hard time watching it now. Why? Because have, have you watched it recently? Mm, within the last decade. Tom Hanks is not a good guy in he's, that movie. No. He's, yeah, not, he's kind of But a, he's he's the representative of like the corporate takeover. Yeah, he's like the Amazon yeah. compared to like the little thing. But like right. he is like messing with her. Like he knows the whole time basically oh. who she is. And he is just straight up messing no, with her. That, that's, that's the whole don't, point. That's don't the whole cry, point shop girl. Don't talk. That's supposed to be romantic for some That's the whole point of the movie. Like have you seen The Shop Around the corner with jimmy stewart yeah, and the girl right. so it's the same character they know before the girl does so they just yeah. you know what though you time. have to have characters or actors like tom hanks and jimmy stewart in order to pull that off because if you have somebody who's kind of sleazy that's a whole different that's movie a different, yeah, that's exactly. a different plot yeah. <laughs> or a different genre dennis hopper yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i've been sending you emails <laughs> <laughs> Like I said, yeah, it would change the plot it and the genre. the genre. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, yeah. we get Dan DeVito to play that. That'd be interesting. <laughs> that, actually, that would be hilarious. Get Dan DeVito. Yeah. <laughs> it's like part adorable and part creepy at the same time. Well, there you go. That. There's a there's a sort of a creepy rom com. You got, yeah, there you go. Uh, so Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Oh gosh. <laughs> is that considered a rom com? No, no that is that show no, defines no, no, no. genre. I was, saying, <laughs> I was like, that, that that show itself is quite interesting. <laughs> so so what is it about those movies that you like is it the plot is it the characters it's, what, what is it's it? the innocence of what we think of love uh, how be. love should be and it goes it, it goes against the reality that we all experience i mean it works into um love is hard to find love is something that uh, should be strived for and things like that but it's it's at a level that we all wish it was really just that easy and then mm -hmm. you know there's so a fall, there is yeah. a prince charming you know it, it's not a prince charming but the the knight in shining armor that you meet yeah. within 90 to 100 minutes yeah yeah you know i mean it's it's the um the the classic chivalrous idea of you have a woman who's looking for love and a companionship and to be taken care of. And then you have a man who's broken that needs to be made whole by a woman. 
Oh. <laughs> well, that's really all I it mean, is. To be honest, it, I mean, that's that's the typical formula, to yeah. be honest. Oh, how disgusting. <laughs> Dan, what's yeah, your favorite? Okay. I want to talk gushy? about three. I okay. want to talk about my actual favorite. Okay. Okay. I want to talk about my like favorite that's more of like a traditional classic. Uh-huh. And I want to talk about the one that I would pick, but I don't think everybody would call it a rom-com. Okay. I like okay. the categories. Ooh, the like. first one that's my favorite is I Love You, Man. Have you ever seen that yeah. with Jason I've, Siegel I've and Paul Rudd? That yeah. movie is just about two about so the, basically the the premise of it is Paul Rudd is getting married to Rashida Jones and he doesn't have any friends. Like he oh, doesn't I have any male that. friends. Sorry. And she has like a ton of friends, right? So she needs him to have at least like a best man for their wedding, right? So what he does is it, it takes all of the tropes of a rom com, mm-hmm. but instead he's looking for a friend, mm. right? Oh. So he goes on dates with these guys, like he gets hooked up with people, <laughs> okay. like blind dates and stuff mm-hmm. like that to like go meet them. It's it's a little raunchy, it, yeah. so I will throw that out there if you're ever interested in watching. It it's definitely earns its R rating, but it's really funny and it is like straight up. Every single beat that's in a regular rom com is in this movie. Okay, but it's just these two guys that become like good friends. Basically, I was thinking of. Um Forgetting Sarah Marshall. Same, yeah, okay. same oh, kind of yeah, dynamic, yeah. right? Yeah. Like same gr- group of people that made it. Yeah. It's just the other one that besides Forgetting Sarah Marshall, it's yeah. excellent. Okay. My more traditional favorite would be When Harry Met Sally. Oh yeah. Oh okay. Just classic. always a classic, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, Billy Crystal, my grand, can't go wrong sure. with that. <laughs> right. um, it's also yeah. a little bit of a darker one, I think, you know, because it's it's definitely a rom com, like it fits in that tradition, but it sort of like starts out as the anti rom com, mm-hmm. right? Like I guess it's that's all, the whole point, right? Right. Like, it's the whole point of it, which I think is kind of fun. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, and it, it definitely um, that was a movie that that seemed to explore. I don't know. It, it the idea of a traditional rom com, the love factor wasn't it was more platonic yeah it was like it, like it yeah. was basically like men and women can't be friends right, right? Yeah. without like relationship stuff getting right. in the way well that, so. that's literally what exactly the, yeah the that's why i like yeah. it. i think it's just okay. fun like it's kind of a, a change up you know of that even though it ends with well no spoilers mm-hmm. and then the one that i don't think people would consider a rom-com but i kind of do is uh princess bride i was oh, gonna I say that, that. that. darn yeah. it dan that was mine well, <laughs> go, go ahead and take it though because like is that, so yeah we <laughs> can talk about when you get there yeah yeah well, yeah, I was wondering that too. Is that considered a rom? I consider yeah. it a rom com okay. for sure. Like, but I don't think I don't know if everybody would. I don't know. Yeah, that's, I think that's it falls question. into a lot because like part parody, right? Well, it's and it's kind a of, fairy tale. Yeah. It's a fairy tale. Yeah, and it had problems marketing mm-hmm. itself when it came out. I mean, mm-hmm. it only it became a cult classic. That's that's the way that it really succeeded. Yeah, because. How do you describe it? It it is a fairy tale, but it's also a princess tale. It's mm-hmm. also a comedy. It's well, I feel like the thing with rom coms is what you had just said is that it kind of gives us this perception of what love should be. But the problem with rom coms is that a lot of people take that into real life relationships and oh, I want my movie or my life to be like The Notebook or it's like they'll try to compare their real love story to a movie they saw, and I'm like, no, that's not how life works because they were stupid in the movie don't be stupid in real life you <laughs> yeah, know yeah. but i feel like with princess bride you know it's not like you're not gonna meet with sword fights and <laughs> right. you know like <laughs> not, not, i mean at least not at least not, not unusual tomorrow, sizes yeah. like you know you yeah. know that that's separate but it's a fun movie that has a bit of romance yeah. and adventure and comedy exactly because it. it's got so much of that stuff so i don't know yeah. if it fits like the traditional rom-com yeah, i, don't I know. mean everything probably with wesley and princess buttercup is yeah. you know definitely kind of fits into that mold no. but then you you know bring in all the other <laughs> elements of that movie and it's just like i don't know maybe not mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah i just i just thought it always goes on a category of like parody film you know like if you were to watch like i don't think so or there, there's not really a, lot of a par- strict parody because it is no. based off a book yeah. Um, oh, okay. That was sort of written, I think, more seriously, uh, or at least oh, somewhat okay. more seriously. So I think it's just a funny fantasy movie. Mm-hmm. Well, oh, and, okay. and you know, it's like that's that's yeah. the other thing that that kind of was weird about or the genius of Rob Reiner, because the story's being read to like a ten-year-old mm. boy. So yeah. this is his his how mind, he's his imagining right. the story being told, mm-hmm. and so there. Uh, of, of course the giant's going to look like a wrestler and of course <laughs> the, the pinnacle wrestler of that time you know mm-hmm. Andre the oh, yeah. Giant <laughs> there's a lot of meta stuff that's going on in that movie which makes it fantastic yeah. and brilliant but uh, yeah <laughs> but you're not you're not wrong into thinking that it it doesn't feel right. it's it's like a Wes Anderson movie and and it's so far apart from a lot of all of Rob Reiner's movies. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Because all of his other movies are kind of standard Hollywood formula. Like, it fits. And then you have The Princess Bride, which is 
kind of out there like with mm-hmm. Wes Anderson, you know, oh, it's yeah. kind of Hollywood adjacent, you yeah. know. Because I think like parodies that were being made at the time were more like Mel Brooks movies that were like explicitly yeah. parodies of mm-hmm. uh, fan- popular genres right. at the time. That's um, true. Yeah. I don't know. All right, so but I think it can be your favorite rom com. Yeah, which is anything wrong with that? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, well, it, for me, it's gonna always be my go to of, of classic films. What's What's a little complicated to me about classic rom coms is that the romantic comedy. I feel like with the romantic comedy of old films, kind of fall under screwball sometimes. So there's a lot more physical comedy involved or snappy dialogue, which I guess you don't necessarily see in a lot of modern romantic comedies. My Fair Lady. No. That one's, actually, that one's kind of frustrating. Actually, I, well, this is kind of off. See, Mayle My Fair in. Lady goes under musicals. See, that's another thing, too. Because I like romantic okay. comedies, but there's also, you know, song and dance attached. Okay. So I was trying to think of one that doesn't involve a song and dance okay. number. But off, uh, off, off topic-ish, I actually pr- prefer Pygmalion over My Fair Lady. I like the more dramatic aspect versus, you know, dancing all night which again i prefer musicals but i just prefer the storyline for that okay. anyway um for me i'm probably and it took a while to think while you guys were talking i'm probably gonna have to say the philadelphia story mm-hmm. it's probably gonna be my it's choice my other one somewhere Tom i was Hanks. thinking bring up baby <laughs> bring up baby yeah <laughs> oh, which the one? first thing i think of <laughs> oh, I when you the, said that <laughs> i missed the joke i didn't hear what you said oh Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'll listen to it in Be the like recording. The classic rom com. Tom Hanks, Denzel. That's <laughs> 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 oh, Silly me. Sumatra. <laughs> <laughs> but Bring a Baby's a good one, too. Like, like I said, our, our definitions of rom coms fit under a bit of a screwball technique or what they call sophisticated comedy. So, like with yeah. the Philadelphia story. Like oh, that's a good one. <laughs> I don't know. If that's. I guess I could be considered. See, like I said, it, it's it's a it's a gray area. I guess okay. it's got romance in it. I think it's got it's, romance it's in it. It's fair game, I guess, if there's romance in it. Well, yeah. Is, is there comedy too? Oh, there's all. Yeah. We got two I, men dressed up as women trying to get into a female band. Have you not seen? Has, I, I don't watch a lot of those. Oh though. man, oh. Oh. Like it hot <laughs> yeah. you need, That that <laughs> one. That's that one's a good one. That's like one of our favorites. So yeah. Me and my sisters get the, together. The closing school. line makes the makes the whole movie <laughs> worthwhile. Um, but yeah, I think I'll say in terms of bring up baby, which is a good one. Philadelphia story, like I said, that's I fall oh, under same characters. Sa- same character. <laughs> <laughs> that's nothing to do with what I was going to talk about, though. Um, nobody's perfect. Nobody's perfect. <laughs> Spoiler alerts: no one's perfect. Um, but yeah, I just—it's a sophisticated comedy. Basically, what's going on is Catherine Hepburn and Cary Grant's character—they're—they're—they they're, they used to be married. They're divorced. Catherine Hepburn's character is about to get remarried, but it seems like there's some scandal involved with her family. And I think Cary Grant is still kind of in love with her, so he's going to try to sabotage the wedding somehow, making the groom look bad, which he's already a jerk to begin with. He's a bit self-centered. So, And then you have the publicity people who are part of the scandal, and then there's a love triangle between Jimmy Stewart and Catherine Hepburn. So there's, like, love triangles and dodecahedrons all around <laughs> the story. And it's, it's a very intertwining story. And also I like about a lot of the the old school rom-coms, which I, I guess is kind of like that with, um, I say old school, but me if me old school is like 30s, 40s, 50s. It usually deals with the elite having to interact with the common people, you know, the riffraff, the, the, the lower class people, and then the lower class people teach the rich person, hey, we're, we're the same, you just have more money, but that doesn't make you any better than I do. Oh, I love you. And that, that's, that, that's pretty <laughs> much how that kind of goes. Um, <clears throat> but it's, it's an interesting story, the Philadelphia story, based off a stage play that Katherine Hepburn was actually in. So she would do the stage play, fall, fly to Hollywood, shoot scenes from the movie of the same play, fly back to New York, do the play. So she was doing that Because it's the easy same to memorize time. lines that way. Yeah, I, well, and... I'm kind of curious how different, or, or what was the difference between the stage play and the the movie. And I, I, yeah, I don't know much about the stage play, but it's all based off of that. But it's just fun to see upper class people. What was it? Jimmy Stewart says the privileged people enjoying their privileges, which is one of the lines in the in the mm-hmm. movie. But it's just cool. Plus, I'm a big fan of Audrey or Ka- sorry, Catherine, Catherine Hepburn. Hepburn. Big fan of Catherine Hepburn. Who doesn't love Cary Grant in anything? He can do a bad movie and it'll still be good because he's <laughs> in it. Jimmy Stewart is extremely sarcastic in this film. Um, it's it's a great cast. I'm sure the stage ca- the stage cast must have been great, but the movie casting was perfect. Um, Jimmy Stewart won Best Supporting Actor in it. 
So it, it's, but I, I like the sophisticated comedy of that better. So I don't know if mine was nearly as um, enlightening as your guys. Well, you gave the full like synopsis. <laughs> and I was background. gonna say she gave the full. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Sorry. My my movie my movie critic <laughs> kind of came out there. But bringing up baby is similar. I was gonna say bringing up baby is probably the movie that I would watch. Like, you know, girls are like, oh. I'm going to watch The Notebook with my boyfriend. Like, that's stupid. Like, so if I had to force a boyfriend to watch a movie, it probably would be Bring a, bring a Baby, which yeah. obviously, well, Cary Grant, Catherine Hepburn, so yeah. same cast. Go, go ahead and give the plot. It's a fun plot. So Bring a Baby, um, Catherine Hepburn ends up getting um, charge of this baby leopard. And so they're trying to return it back to, oh, was it her mother, her, her aunt's house? Something like that. Yeah, yeah. her aunt's house. And so... Um, Cary Grant's character is this really smart, like nerdy archaeologist. Yeah, archaeologist works at a museum. Um, he's trying to put together these dinosaur bones. Anyway, um, she ends up tricking him to having her accompany her to bring this leopard back, and they're trying to hide it and not let anyone find out that they have it. Um, in the same area, there's this circus or something where like a real <laughs> leopard gets loose, and so their leopards get switched. So it's, it's really funny. It's very like lighthearted. You don't really yeah. have to think too much about it. They end up falling in love at the end, but yeah. Um, so spoiler, but yeah, I, I really love that movie, and I think it's funny. It involves dinosaur bones, leopards, and love. So <laughs> <laughs> who, who could who ask for a better? Wearing a dress. Um, or like or a, a negligee. Yeah, which is also kind of funny, too. I think yeah. if I had to pick a quote-unquote modern one, it would probably be Pride and Prejudice from 2005, the Keira Knightley version. <laughs> mm. um, that's always fun. But I, I like Jane Austen. We read that. I read. I, I don't think we read that in school. I think I just read that myself because um, I like reading classic literature. So anyway, we talked <laughs> a lot about rom-coms. We have not discussed old wives' tales No, yet. No toes yet. Yep. No discussion <laughs> about toes. No, no old sixes. wives' toes. Uh, I actually did collect a few uh, what they consider old wives' tales. Um, the thing is with old wives' tales, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's just for married women. It's just old English for, for women, so it's just old women's tales. It's been around for like, who knows, five, six hundred years. Mm -hmm. um, but we have one that people always talked about. Don't that put rock up your nose. Is that a wives' tale or is that just good advice? <laughs> 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 <I'm sorry. laughs> it I should think be that's like true. Don't put rocks up your it nose. Should, so. it, you need to add more to it. It's like don't don't inhale rocks <laughs> or you'll turn into a stone on the well, inside. It, it, it's totally lost its place now. The the reason why that was taught when I was a kid was playgrounds were gravel. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. It yeah. Was, yeah, everything was gravel. And it was all pea-sized gravel. I yeah, mean, we had those. I'm going to make an argument, though. Okay. Put rocks up your nose once, <laughs> and you yeah, won't do it again. Or do it again. Yeah. <laughs> Put ro Wait, shame, on, shame on me. It's yeah. kind of like the hot stove thing. It's like you yeah. can tell like, a kid, like, hey, don't touch the hot stove. But until they do it yeah. once, like, I then told, they'll I be like, oh. Say, oh. So, you, so yeah. you don't do it again. Either you learn your lesson and don't do it again, yeah. or you choke and die, <laughs> and you still won't do it again. Yeah. So either That's way, you're not going to do yeah. it again. Yeah. yeah. Same outcome. Yeah. <laughs> they, they, similar outcome. <laughs> So what would be the 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 new uh, same for modern playgrounds? It's the everything is so soft the, and padded the now. The rubber mold is, yeah. is not beef jerky. Or something. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Let's try to think about making our own yeah. wives' tales. Well, like just stay indoors. Just, yes. stay, indoors, just stay indoors. Play on your phone. COVID's everywhere. Pretend like you're on. <laughs> you're well, 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 we have we have some that we've at least I know I've heard, um, and I still hear sometimes. Like the big one is you know if you. If you swim after you eat, you get cramps. Okay. You ever yeah. heard, I don't know if you guys have heard that one growing up. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I think people are still saying that. Yeah, is it's it, is not that, true. Is that not yeah. true? Apparently, no. it says no. it's, it says it's not true. Um, I, mean, I can't do a lot whole, of things after whole, I eat. Well, that's the thing. Stand. <laughs> the, the whole walk, idea is that breathe, if you gorge stay conscious. Yourself, like all the blood like rushes to help the digestion. Right. So, yeah. uh, no, it, it is true, so. but it said it's not enough to keep your arm and leg muscles from right. like, well, like, from yeah. being like, I guess I'm drowning. Now. That, that's <laughs> yeah, the person that's who's it. bad at swimming that I ate, and then like they went, they're like, oh, leg cramp, leg cramp, must be the food. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like you either have to eat a lot, or like you have to do like Michael Phelps level swimming yeah. like most right. people if they're just at a pool party they're splashing around you know beach balls whatever they're not like swimming laps and getting cramped up after a so next thanksgiving is going to be at the pool yeah. so we can all test <laughs> so this, theory. Test this theory. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. i want you to eat three three servings of food yeah. and then jump in the deep end yep. and then maybe we'll save you if you get a up cramp. and down <laughs> 10 times let's go you're being timed. <laughs> I gotta throw up. <laughs> well, I know when we used to, when me and Charity used to go swimming at the Y, 
um, they would, I'm trying to remember if it was like every hour, or maybe every, every other hour, they would take everybody out of the pool for 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then I think that was back. just to give like the lifeguards and stuff a break. Probably I don't think one hundred percent give the lifeguards had, a break. That had yeah. nothing to do with like and the health and safety. Probably dump some more chlorine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> As a <laughs> former <laughs> lifeguard, it has zero <laughs> to do with safety yeah. of children. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Kids have been in here, and none of them have used the bathroom. <laughs> 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 okay, that's true. More chlorine. <laughs> well, we'll just blame it on the food yeah. cramps. Blame on the food cramps. Either that or Adult Swim, where like you go with the adults going and swim for like fifteen minutes, and all the kids to sit there and pout on the side <laughs> <laughs> yeah well I, in retrospect i realized but i was like they're like oh they're really caring for my safety you know can I have all of it we just, we just <laughs> <laughs> you dumb oh you sweet summer child <laughs> <laughs> oh the innocence and naivete really makes me laugh okay so here's one i don't know if you guys have heard of apparently another wife's tale is that coffee can stunt your growth mm -hmm. oh yeah yeah so you know, it was funny because it probably wouldn't because most people don't really start drinking coffee until they're older. Of course, nowadays, you know, kids are starting to drink coffee more often. I think people used to say that about it's sugar, not coffee, too. coffee, though. It's mostly cream and sugar. Yeah, I was going to yeah. say, yeah. people used to say that about sodas. Like, if you drink oh. too many sodas, the sugar would stunt your growth. I'm trying to remember if I've heard that, no or I just lights. don't remember. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're tall enough, yeah, Dan. I'm tall the, enough. Take yeah. it from the six-foot guy. <laughs> don't drink that coffee. Six-two, thank you. Have you. A oh, six right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> see, see, you could have been six-six, but you drunk all that. Makes you taller. <laughs> <laughs> Makes you feel nine feet tall. <laughs> that's why. That's why Alan, Alan keeps a, a, a pipe in his room. When this he's podcast doing. sponsored by Camel. <laughs> now, there's one I'd never heard of until today. That an old wives' tale is that cats can suck babies' breath. I have heard that. Yeah. Really? Yes. And it's because I think there's actually a scientific reason behind it. But Ooh, it, what, what? it can suck. They they suck baby souls out. Oh, baby soul. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, apparently, yeah, that's not some yeah. big superstition thing. Yeah, and I think the reason, as far as I understand, the reason behind it is because uh, cats would climb into cribs sometimes and lay on babies' faces and suffocate them. Oh. Very sad, <laughs> but does, that is... It does say it was based on the... I think that's where it comes from. It so does say it was based like on a 300-year-old... Like yes, kind of like that, yeah. Okay. But there was so the game of thing was like, oh, don't let your cat near the babies, or yeah. it'll suck their soul nope, out. That's exactly what yeah. they said. It was uh, there was a case that happened about three hundred years ago where that happened. So one cat, one cat yeah. ruined it. Ruined for it for everyone. Everybody. All the cats gotta go. Alternatively, <laughs> it's kind of a neat marketing ploy, right? Yeah. For like really dark people. Yeah. Like, I want the soul sucking cat. <laughs> <laughs> and since we were talking about superstition, there probably would be a black cat. It's like trust the black cat to lay and suck the <laughs> baby's breath. I, I personally had never heard. I, <laughs> that was that was an odd one. Yeah, that's a new one for me. Yeah, so we got time. I mean, we squeeze in one more. We can do one more. We have one more one that I hear all the time, and it still bugs me. But cracking knuckles can cause arthritis. Stop it! <laughs> <laughs> I can I do just, it pretty I well. Just don't the, like it. And my the, girls are at an age where they've uh, discovered that they can, and yeah. I'm just like don't do it around me i just don't like the sound of it yeah i used to be able to do it much more on on cue i can't uh, do it as well anymore yeah. that's because i'm I old just, and frail i, I just <laughs> hate uh, the sound of it. i don't like, like the sound and of like it. i've accidentally hit my hand or if i've accidentally yeah. popped yeah. a knuckle before oh. and it hurts like crap and i'm like why would you do that why would you just do that on the regular my knuckles but my wrist i can do like i can do Ooh. it on cue basically stop Ooh. breaking oh. yourself i just <laughs> did that this morning with my knee i i was standing and then i pivoted and my knee went clack, and I was like, oh, did it? <laughs> <laughs> Am I alive? <laughs> is that like, oh, is, there a cat, is there a cat sucking my breath? <laughs> What's going on? This is how it ends. <laughs> <laughs> And the <laughs> <laughs> at that point, random time something breaks, you'd be like, I've had a good life. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Immediately went into review and analysis. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Sorry, that was that was a good oh, I had wow. just, But yeah, apparently it doesn't cause arthritis. I think it's just the fact that parents didn't like the sound of it, kinda like what you were saying. Yeah. But apparently it's uh, nitrogen bubbles in the fluid and it, that's supposed to apparently lu lubricate your joint. But if you feel pain or discomfort while you're cracking it, that might be a bigger issue. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't care what the science is. Just don't 
Just don't. Just don't. And I, can, I can remember in, in remember in middle <laughs> oh school, God, coming for like you, people would always just be like, "Oh, I can never do that." Yeah. I'm like, "Good grief!" Yeah, I don't even like what my chiropractor does. Yeah. I'm like, "I hope you know what you're doing while you're." He's like, "Just crunching. shut up and yeah, <laughs> let me He's do just my like <laughs> crunching and stuff." I'm like, "Okay, well, you've got a degree on the wall that says you can, you can pop off." <laughs> okay, <laughs> <They> doctor. <laughs> <laughs> License to crack back. That's right. Check this out, Charity. <laughs> you just sound like bubble wrap when you squeeze it too hard. Do you ever have like friends in school where you're like, oh, my back needs like popping over you? Like, oh yeah. Arms or I and they, like, oh, never did you. that. Yes. I had people that do. I'd be like, oh man, my back is sore, and they'd be like, hey, put your or rest your arms, I'll pick you up, and then they just like start shaking me. I'd be like, this is not doing it. It's like, what are we doing here? <laughs> no, because they don't know what they're doing. <laughs> the problem. Turn into a rom com. <laughs> just like. <laughs> <laughs> and then you fall in love. <laughs> <laughs> <Chiropractor and education>. <laughs> <laughs> What's cracking, dog? What's cracking, dog? Yeah, that's that's the new rom com <laughs> coming to theaters, twenty twenty three. Well, with, <laughs> with that terrifying rom com title that I will never see because I don't like cracking bones, we're gonna end that right there before it becomes too painful. Um, if you guys have any old wife tales that we missed and like to let us know, you can let us know in our social media platforms or if you want to make any arguments about your favorite rom-coms or how I think they're all garbage, you can let us know (laughs) on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. So Sarah, let our listeners know how they can find us. Like what Charity said, it is on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at Double Stuff Podcast. You can check out our website to binge listen at DoubleStuffPod.com. And of course, on Twitter at DoubleStuffP, and that's the letter P. Oh my God. (laughs) Stop it. I'm the wrong topic. (laughs) 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 I don't have no idea what that's going on.